bitch. What did you say? Yes, we are here for a bitch. What did you say? Okay, girl, I'm pretty much going to include in this bitch, what did you say? Um, a bunch of topics and things that are going on um, in the news, on the blogs, and all that type of good old stuff, y'all. Um, and a lot of them are kind of going to be a bitch, what did you say moment. So we're going to title this bitch, what did you say number or whatever, y'all. So I'm going to be scrolling through my phone because a lot of the stories that I'm going to be telling you guys are on my phone. I do have a couple of them saved on my notepad because y'all know a bitch can sit here and talk for 35,000 fucking hours. Okay, girl, and we probably going to do that any damn way because that's just who we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this bitch, what did you say number, whatever. Okay, girl. Okay. First and foremost, the first story we're going to talk about, we're going to start out with a big old gigantic doozy, okay? And that big old gigantic doozy that we're going to start out with is the fact that they have come out now and basically are saying that um, someone found a knife, a construction worker found a knife buried on the O.J. Simpson property. You know, the O.J. Simpson estate that has been since demolished. Now, when I first saw this story that TMZ... Um, you know, put up because he they're the first ones that I saw. And most people I don't necessarily like media takeout. I'm very leery about clicking on their stories. I will if it's something that you know looks a little interesting, but I'm very leery about clicking on their story because half of the time, most of the crap that they post is total bullshit. We already know that. But whenever I see TMZ post something, because we already know TMZ gets the T girl. So the gag about this story, because like I said, I thought this was something that happened like today or yesterday or very recently y'all the killer about this the fact that this person the construction worker when they were demolishing the the oj simpson estate he found a knife on the property and it's reported that it was back in like 1998 or something like that and i'm thinking to myself we're in 2016 why in the hell are they just now reporting that somebody found a knife on the oj simpson property let me tell you what this constru construction worker said happened. He, they were demolishing this property. He reportedly found this folding book knife, okay? As he was, you know, uh, going to turn the knife in, he noticed an LAPD officer, an off-duty officer that was close around the property or something like that. So he walked over to the officer and gave the officer the knife, okay? And this officer, instead of this freaking LAPD, off-duty off LAPD, off LAPD officer, Turning the knife in like any normal police officer police officer is supposed to do, this dude decides that he's going to take the knife home as a souvenir. Granted, you know, O.J. Simpson had already been tried and he had already been um, found not guilty of the crime. But, sir, when somebody finds something like that on a property, okay, you don't just take it home talking about you finna frame it. Talking about he was gonna go. Let me, matter of fact, I'm not even finna go into the full details because I'm gonna read y'all a little bit of a snippet of what TMZ said. But what type of police officer, okay, does some shit like that when you act, when a, when a construction worker tells you that they have found a piece of evidence like this on a property of a um, person who people have suspected to being the killer of two people, okay, girl? And, and, and the people um, were stabbed to death. This is crazy. But let me read you this. It says, a construction worker found a knife buried on the perimeter of the former O.J. Simpson estate. And it's currently being tested by LAPD in a top secret investigation. It's not really top secret if TMZ got wind of it, so it's not top secret. Girl, let me just, let's just say that, okay? Law enforcement sources tell TMZ. The story is incredible. We're told a construction worker found the knife years ago. We have heard several different stories ranging from several years ago to 1998 when the house was demolished. The weapon, weapon is a folding book knife. Our law enforcement sources say the construction worker took the knife to the street where he saw an LAPD cop. He told the officer he found the knife and the cop took it. Okay, thinking of course normal people would think this, this cop is going to take it and he's going to... Of course, turn it into the police, you know, one of his, you know, to the proper authorities. No, okay. <laughs> in, in, in late January of this year, okay, January of this year, which is 98, 2008, bitch, we almost, damn it, 20 years later, girl, are you serious? In late January of this year, 2016, after the cop retired from the LAPD, he contacted a friend who worked in LAPD's robbery homicide division. 
The cop told the friend about the knife and said he was getting it framed to put it on his wall. He wanted his friend to get the DR departmental record number for the Nicole Brown Simpson slash Ronald Goldman murder case, which he planned on engraving in the frame. We're told the friend was indignant and told his superiors. The brass was outraged, outraged and demanded that the retired cop turn over the knife, which he did. Our sources say the knife is currently being tested for hair and fingerprints. It will be moved to the serology unit next week where it will be tested for DNA and other biological evidence and there's a whole lot of other stuff going on. But girl, let me tell you something. Who in the hell does that? What type of police officer, okay, does some shit like that? I can sit there, okay, it, it was a double homicide next door to my house, okay? I don't give a damn if it was five years later, okay? This person that lives next door has been tried and found not guilty of this murder, okay? But we just so happen to be, I buy his property. Just I'm just throwing out a scenario out there. I'm buying his property. We decide that we want to tear it down because we want to build something else. I find a gun on this property, okay? A gun that, you know, uh, the, the double homicide that happened when these people died, they were shot. So I found a, find a gun. I take it to a police officer. Even though this person has been tried and found not guilty and there's no way they could try this person again because it's double jeopardy, you still, it's police protocol for you to take the knife, I mean, I'll take the gun to the proper authorities, not decide that, oh, I'm going to take this home and frame it because it came from a double homicide murder case and the person, he's not guilty. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. You seriously, this is the type of police officer. Okay. These are the type of police officers that these people got, um, uh, uh protected and serving us. These people are incompetent down the sun, but any, I'm not going to go down. But y'all, that's what's going on right now. And we, let's be honest. I know everybody has differences of opinions as far as the OJ Simpson case is concerned. But I'm going to tell you about Thick Chick Vlogs. And I'm going to keep it 100% trivial, holy feel. I personally, in my personal opinion, in my humble opinion, I honestly and truly feel that um, OJ Simpson killed Nicole uh, uh, Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. If he did not do it. Okay, if he did not do it, then of course he knows who does, who, who did it. And of course, I'm sitting there, you know, this was way when I was younger, but of course, I've kind of sort of watched the case since then. But I'm caught kind of sort of figuring that he either did it or he knew who did it and he was there when it happened. And of course, that whole if the glove don't quit, if the glove don't fit, it must have quit. In my opinion, it's bullshit. If I decide that I want to go out and kill someone, I can always go and buy a, a, a pair of small ass fucking gloves and I'm like okay if they find these fucking gloves girl I can always put this shit on and it don't fit me so they are gonna be like oh it doesn't fit her so she must not um have committed this crime girl it don't work like that just says and so I think chick vlogs this is my humble opinion I'm only giving you my opinion I feel like the motherfucker did but of course he was found not guilty of the crime so of course you can't sit there and be like oh okay he uh, uh, was found not guilty later on we started finding evidence or he decided he gonna write this book of, if I would have did it this is how I would have done it look you found the man not guilty that's pretty much all she wrote and plus now we already know that OJ Simpson should have been out of jail for the crime that he committed as far as going and robbing somebody for his own shit which he should have just called the police because that was our, it was waiting on your black ass to fuck up boo they was waiting on you to fuck up that's the smallest little bit of a thing they was waiting on you to do so of course when OJ Simpson decided he was gonna go and you know at gunpoint holding people up at gunpoint to take his shit back when he should have just either sent somebody else to do that shit or he should have called the police girl I knew OJ Simpson wanted to get out of jail so now that he he showed enough he didn't been in there for I don't know how many years, but OJ Simpson is going to die in that jail cell. Just fucking saying. So, um, yeah, that's what the new situation that's going on with the OJ, OJ Simpson thing. And I thought you think it's ironic that now that they have this series on FX, the, um, what is it? The people versus, versus OJ Simpson. And now all of a sudden this person is coming forward saying that he has the knife from the OJ Simpson Brown case. Don't you think that's crazy? I think it's crazy. But anyway, let's let let's let's move forward. That's the new thing that's going on in the OJ Simpson case, you guys, okay? Yeah. Go and check it out on TMZ's website. Just says it. Moving on. Now, this next thing is gonna be, girl, this is gonna be a show enough. Bitch, what did you say fucking moment, girl? Okay, let me let me pull this shit up right here quick. Well, I think I have it on my phone. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Because um I'm not seeing it on my note things. Okay. Okay, I know where to go now. All right, 
I did write the title down, but I didn't write the actual um, situational down. But this family, okay, a family of people who they, their grandmother died. And they, you know, of course, most people have a funeral home that they go to all the time whenever a family member dies or something like that. A funeral home that people use all the time in their general area or whatever. So this particular family takes their family member and the people that were speaking on the story are is the is the grandchildren. Um they took their grandmother to of course she died and they you know she was transported to this particular funeral home. Made the funeral arrangement, picked out the casket, gave the people her clothes and everything. So they go once the you know it's time for the funeral, they go to the wake. They show up at the wake. These some bitches open up this it's, it's the casket they picked out and everything. They open up the casket, okay, girl. They grandmama and in the casket. They didn't put another woman in this casket, in the goddamn clothes that I, that they didn't bought up. That's where they grandma. So not only, okay, motherfucker, you didn't put some. And I'm, I'm not trying to talk about the person that's deceased or nothing like that. That was in the casket, the wrong person. But you didn't put a person that I don't know in my grandmother's casket. Not only did you put this person in my grandmother's casket, you put this person in my grandmother's clothing. Are you fucking kidding me? Everybody in that funeral home boo would have had a well whooped ass on that day. Okay, I'm talking about baby. When I tell you, I would, girl, I would have been knocking over every goddamn thing up and around up and through the with the exception of the dead. Okay, I'm not gonna be knocking over no damn caskets with people. Them, but bitch, trust me, y'all would have felt my fucking wrath. Okay, boo, baby, ain't no way in the same head they would have got away with no shit. Girl, so you mean, how the fuck do you make a fuck up like that? To where you, uh, obviously, the person um who was in this casket was supposed to be buried. um And, and they put their, this person, these people's grandmother in the ground. And it was supposed to be that one. But I'm trying to figure out. Okay. So you mean to tell me the person that y'all buried, family? Um, didn't notice that that wasn't a damn relative in that casket, okay, girl? Or did y'all cremate the woman, okay? Or the, the, did you cremate um the grandmother, and now you got this other woman, girl? That's some shit. When I tell you a law fucking, I would sue them mother. They wouldn't be able to goddamn embalm another soul, okay? They wouldn't be able to embalm nothing else, not even a goddamn dog. I'm telling you, okay, girl? No, nah, mm -mm. now that ain't some fuck shit. Y'all tell me what y'all think about that, okay? Your mother, your loved one. It ain't got to be you be your mama, your grandmama, nobody. Your loved one passes away. You already going through some shit, okay? Cause trust me, it ain't it ain't nothing easy about um having to go make funeral arrangements for your loved one, having to go and take clothes up that girl. That stuff is stressful. You already emotional because you have just lost your loved one, and you're having to take you know stuff up there, and make these arrangements and all this type of stuff. And then the day that you're supposed to. Say your final goodbyes to your loved one. They open the casket and it's a, a stranger. Where the hell is my goddamn family? Where they at? So you mean to tell me you didn't blink my family up, but you didn't already buried them. But what's what the, the killer to me is how in the hell did the family of the person who obviously is um you know who who my grandmother or whoever um was buried. I'm trying to figure out how those people didn't recognize that she had to be cremated or something like that. They didn't get specifics, but that's some that's that's some show enough, bitch. What did you say, moment? I just had to tell y'all about that, girl. Mm -mm. We girl, let me move on from that because girl, I can go into a whole lot of a tangents about that situation right there because girl, that shit got me hot and heated. I can only imagine showing them to the funeral home and they they, they got somebody else, uh, uh, dad or granddad in the casket. It ain't my damn dad, a uh, girl. Thank you, Lord, for not letting that happen. And, and Father God, I'm, 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 I'm depending, leaning, and depending on you to not let it happen in the future. Because Lord, you know I need my freedom, y'all. You know I need my freedom. Because I promise you, I will set that damn funeral home on fire. Just saying. Let's move on, okay, girl. Woo! I'm mad for them people, y'all. I'm mad for them. Let's move on, okay. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about. Now, this is another bitch. What did you say, Mama, y'all? Okay. Have y'all seen this news story? Okay, the first person that I saw that shared this was um, my sister from another Mr. Miss uh, uh, Much Love from KY. And when I seen it, of course, I thought it was some type of satire site or some, some shit. Because I be clicking on a lot of satire sites and a lot of times I will forget um, or, or I won't pay attention and look at the title. I mean, look at the, 
the web address and I'll just click on the story and I'll automatically be like, what the fuck is this shit? And I don't think it's for real, but this is an actual real story. And I think it's some show no fuck shit, but I think it's, um, I think, I think white folk low key trying to be funny. Just fucking saying, I mean, they just sure don't want us to look like some goddamn fools, even though our people, okay, people, mel melanated people are on video saying stupid idiotic ass shit like this. These people are saying that, um, uh, let me give you the title, demonic weaves. Okay, demonic weaves believed to be the root of hair crimes. Bitch, don't you dare. Okay, don't you dare sit there and try to put this foolishness that these folks out here doing killing people and all this type of shit on no goddamn hair. Talking about, do you know um, what type of uh, spirit that the person who hair on your head uh, had? That you, that's why you need to pray over it. Girl, let me read y'all a little bit of this motherfucker shit. Demonic hair weaves is the cause of people committing crimes. For real? Let me read y'all this shit. Thieves have killed four people while trying to steer, steal hair weaves and products. And now many Memphians say demonic spirits could be to blame. It is a theory that's taking on a life of its own online. Search the words, okay, in your Google search bar, search the words cursed hair on the web and the prophecies are plenty. Whosever hair I was wearing on my head, that helper had a bad omen, and that bad omen followed her from India and came on the top of my head, and I took on her spirit. One woman said on YouTube, no bitch, you was already a fucking demonic ass person. Not saying that objects can't hold, you know, evil spirits. I'm not saying that shit because that is a proven fact that objects can hold evil spirits. But no motherfucker. Okay, you're not going to sit there and tell me that this damn weave that you got on your damn head got you committing crimes, killing folks, and, and stealing and all this type of shit. You won't, don't, don't do no shit like that. So people going to seriously be in court trying to use this type of shit as a damn... Um, defense. Okay, the weave I had on my head that was a it was a demonic woman who uh that hair must have came off that woman's head, y'all, and now it got me around here committing these damn crimes. Okay, girl. Now this is some real shit. This ain't no satire site that I'm reading, girl. This is some real shit. Okay, this is from WBRC.com, which is a real news station. Okay, so this ain't no satire. These motherfuckers are seriously around here saying that hair weaves are causing them to commit crimes and shit. I'm not even gonna read y'all the rest of this. Y'all can Google that shit if you want to. Demonic weaves. Read, read that shit, okay, girl. I'm not even gonna continue on that goddamn story, nigga. That shit, that 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 shit make my damn head hurt. Bitch, what did you say? Okay, bitch, what did you say? Seriously? Moving on. Moving on. Now, in other news, we're gonna move on to some more serious things okay it's, it's still bitch what did you say but we're gonna move on to a little bit more serious topics all right let's talk about this young black girl who was assaulted at this donald trump rally okay now apparently at this donald trump rally i think it was in in georgia in baldosta baldosta georgia i'm thinking that's where it was let me make sure um if i'm a, if i'm mistaken about the location it really don't even matter i know it was at a trump rally okay but at this Donald Trump rally, this young girl who was a Donald Trump supporter, okay, she was at this Trump rally, and apparently there were other people who were there who had up uh, signs and things that were protesting at Donald Trump's rally. But this young lady was not a part of that group, okay? She was not a part of that group, from my understanding. She was an actual Donald Trump supporter, okay? So, of course, <laughs> white supremacists, <laughs> these racist fucks, who are literally um, on their fucking hands and knees praying that Donald Trump becomes the president of the United States so they can show no wreck havoc, okay? These people are seriously out here. Um, I I'm talking about just being totally disgusting, okay? It it it's family seems... I know people have been racist since the beginning of time, and people are probably always going to be racist. Let me just say that. Um, but... People now, now that all this, uh, all this shit is happening, it's like race wars and all this type of shit that's um gonna, girl, it's gonna happen. It, it really, honestly, and truly is. All this shit is going on now, but these people are showing up bold. Okay, they're doing this shit without any type of regard. Now, let me read you this shit. Okay, as Republican front runner Donald Trump becomes more confident in his bid for the White House, and of course, if you guys don't know. Donald Trump, of course, you know, uh, Super Tuesday, a lot of people are afraid because Super Tuesday, Donald Trump pretty much, you know, he pretty much won, girl. I mean, but we, that was pretty much to be expected. But let me tell you something. Here come the actual presidential, uh, the presidential uh, uh, vote when it comes to, is it November or something? Like that? I, don't, I don't remember the exact day. All I know is Donald Trump will not be the next POTUS. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Donald Trump will not be the next POTUS. So you can, you can calm your, your nerves, girl, because he won't. I know people are afraid and don't get me wrong 
Yes, there are a lot of nasty, racist people out there who are, girl, they're going hard in the paint trying to get Donald Trump to be the next president of the United States. But let me tell you something. There were a lot of people who didn't come out for Super Tuesday. A lot of people didn't even know what the fuck Super Tuesday was. Just saying. A lot of people didn't even know we were voting on Super Tuesday. So, but let me tell you something. The same way that it was when President Obama was, um, you know, uh, for a second term, well, hell, the first term, both of the term, both of the terms, when President Obama uh, was, you know, b b when he became president, when we were voting for the president, you know, eight years ago and four years ago, it's going to be that type of a turnout. I can guarantee you, Donald Trump will not be the next president of the United States. And if he is, it was a whole lot of fucking cheating going on. Let me just say that. Not saying that the shit is not possible because anything is possible, but trust me. Okay, you, you heard it from Thick Chick Vlogs. I personally do not think that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States, but that's just my personal opinion. So, you know, I just think people need to calm their boot springs right now because, you know, we still have a lot of more voting to, to do. I think tomorrow is another vote, I think in Kentucky and Louisiana, if I'm not mistaken. And I think on Sunday you have another vote. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm pretty sure about it, but I'm not 100% positive. But yeah, let me move on. But anyway, it said the excitement around Trump clearly started to take the form of violent and racist attacks against black people who attended his rallies. Oh, it, okay, it was, on, it was in Louisville, Kentucky. On Tuesday in Louisville, Kentucky, Trump supporters forcibly removed a young black woman named Shia, I'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name, from the rally. The move goes far beyond just racism and appears to be downright criminal. Leading up to the assault, Several large groups of protesters were in, were in attendance holding up signs which were quickly being snatched away by Trump supporters, many of whom open, openly belong to well-documented hate groups such as Traditionalist Work Party, Worker Party. You can see one of the party leaders, Matthew uh, Himbach, or some shit like that, in the video of the assault against um, uh, Shia. Um, he believes to be, he's believed to be w the one in the red, make America great again, had who repeatedly shoved and screamed profanity, profanities in the teen, teenage, teenage girl's face. As the video progresses, it appears that people begin to shove the young woman back and forth simply for the fun of it. So now you got all of these people, okay, all of these people that are around this young woman, seeing these people push her, shove her, scream and calling her uh, uh, N-words and cunts and bees and all this type of screaming all this stuff in this young girl's face. And they're just standing there, okay? Ain't no way in the hell, if you are a decent human being, if you're at a, a Donald Trump rally uh, and you see someone treating another person there who is basically there just, you know, to it, it, watch the rally, see what the hell this motherfucker is going to say. She's not saying anything that she's literally just standing there minding her business. Okay. And these people just literally start pushing this. We don't want you here. You stupid N word. And that just goes to show the type of people that are supporting this man. And it's very, 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 very scary. And she did make a video saying following the rally, um, Shania shared her experience in the video. She later posted to Facebook. I was called an N-word and a C and got kicked out. They were pushing and shoving me, cursing at me, yelling me, calling me every name in the book. They were disgusting and dangerous. Yes. Now, <laughs> family, I just, I cannot seem to, I mean, I like I said, I'm not surprised though. I'm honestly and truly not surprised, but we already know, okay? If you're going to be a black person, now... <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but any black person that's out here talking about, hell, any person, any decent human being that's out here that agrees with anything that Donald Trump says, something is seriously wrong with your ass. I'm just saying. Now, everybody is, a, you know, is, is entitled to their own opinion. Don't get me wrong. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But I don't care if you black, white, or other, okay? If you are black, white, or other, and you support Donald Trump, something is seriously wrong with your ass. That man is a disgusting, hateful, nasty person, okay? One of the nasty, I mean, he is so vile and disgusting that it's ridiculous. Yes, you got normal people out there that say nasty and vile things, but when you are running for the, to be, you're, you're trying to be the president of these United States of America, okay? There is no way in hell you can be such a nasty, hateful, disgusting person and want to run this country right here. I'm sorry, okay? Not, girl, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, 
it is disgusting to me to even know of anyone who supports them. People who have who have claimed that they supported this man that were on my Facebook friend list, I'm not going to lie, I've deleted the fuck out of you. Because, I mean, some, I mean, motherfucker, that make me think, motherfucker, you probably feel some type of way about me if you support any goddamn thing this motherfucker is saying. I'm saying, y'all know how I feel about those shaggy head motherfucker. I cannot stand that damn man. But, um, just, I'm sorry this happened to you, um, Miss, um, I don't want to mispronounce your name again, Miss, uh, Shia, but baby girl, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not surprised, but ain't no way in the hell you should have been at no damn Donald Trump rally. Not not saying that you should have been there and, and those people should have been putting their hands on you in no shape, form, no fashion should they have touched you at all. But girl, okay, I like I said, I, um, from my understanding, people were saying that she was she was there as a supporter. But girl, for real though, I mean, um, I hate that these people did this shit to you, but I'm no way in no way, shape, form, nor fashion surprise but the motherfuckers who did it they got them on camera they need to prosecute these motherfuckers for assault just saying now let me purge this shit we're gonna take a commercial break this girl i need to take a sip of my damn water girl mm. okay family we are back girl i had the girl i had to take a breather if y'all know y'all know how i feel about donald trump girl. i can't stand that damn man so i be having to take breathers after i talk about him girl that shit is draining just saying but the next situation we're gonna talk about girl is our brother from another mother, okay? Our brother from another mother, Cat Williams, okay? I'm pretty sure if you have, if you got any type of social media account, you probably already know that Cat Williams decided that he wanted to throw daggers at Kevin Hart, basically saying Kevin Hart sucked dick to get where he is and how he wants to um, challenge Kevin Hart to a comedy off of sorts. Telling him that he's going to have an event in Philly and basically he wants to put $5 million on the line to see who's the funniest person. Basically saying that Cat, I mean, uh, that Kevin Hart wouldn't be where he is if he hadn't gotten into so much trouble. And I'm thinking to myself, so you mean to tell me you basically blaming Kevin Hart for the fact that you keep getting arrested and you just can't do right? Now, as far as who's the funniest, I'm just going to, I'm just going to shut this down right here right now and give y'all Thick Chick Vlogs his opinion. Don't get me fucked up. Kevin Hart's a funny dude, but I think that uh, Cat Williams out funnies him to me. Now, if he if he just stay out of fucking trouble, I think Cat Williams could have shown up, been shown up big time, okay? I personally think that Cat Williams is funnier than Kevin Hart, but that's just my opinion. Don't get me fucked up. Kevin Hart is funny, but I think Cat Williams is funnier. But to throw daggers at someone because they're a little bit higher than you, I think it's low-key fucked up. And I, I just, I mean, you just, you don't, you don't win by doing shit like that. And, and of course, he was waiting on Kevin Hart to respond, basically saying that he's going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring my $5 million in cash and all this type of shit. Girl, I don't even know if Kevin Williams got $5 million. I ain't not, no shade, but do he really got $5 million? I, maybe I just don't fucking know. But, um, telling Kevin Hart, you can bring your money however you want to bring it. Just don't bring none of them white folks, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just all types of fucking daggers, y'all. I mean, just out of fucking nowhere, which is totally... I mean, I don't know what the hell going on with Cat Williams, but I wish he would get his shit together. But um, Kevin Hart, of course, posted a picture, and he was basically saying, you know, fuel hate by achieving more success, which, y'all, let me tell y'all something. My mom used to tell me this shit all the time. My daddy, too. If you want to show no piss somebody, y'all, people who are already pissed up for no apparent reason, just keep keep striving to be the best person that you can be, okay? I mean, and, I, and, and that, that was so classy of Kevin Hart to not come back at him, fuck you, motherfucker, you know, et cetera, et cetera, basically just going back and forth. But... I just think Cat William, he kind of threw a low blow with that one, basically saying that this boy sucked dick to get where he is and all this type of shit. Don't get me wrong. Now, I've heard the rumors, too, that Cat, that, that Kevin Hart then you know, then, then been down on his knees a couple of times. But, of course, those are straight-up rumors. And ain't no way in shape, form, nor fashion am I going to say that I sit there and believe this type of shit. But people do crazy-ass things to get in high places. But I think that was fucked up for him to say just out of the blue. This man ain't did shit to him in my... In, in, in my uh, recollection is just some shit that he just came out and said maybe he was just low-key pissed off this dude has so much success i mean kevin hart is popping right now but cat williams like i said of course he he just and, and the crazy part about it after he said that which is even crazier i don't know if this shit is a coincidence or what girl but after he said this shit he was down there in atlanta he, apparently he was in some store or some shit now this is the rendition that he gave 
He said that he was in a store, okay? Apparently, he was in there with his crew, his posse. There's probably a whole bunch of them in there. Whoever the person was, a, a, a white man. Apparently, the man probably thought they were stealing some shit. I don't know. This is what Cat Williams is saying. So, Cat Williams said that he saw uh, like a bunch of merchandise down on the counter. He said he the, the man assumed that he was placing the things on the counter in a, in a way to distract him from the his posse stealing or whatever. But Cat Williams said he pulled out... Fifteen one hundred dollar bills, and when he peeled up, pulled out the fifteen one hundred dollar bills, he said the man put proceeds to put the money in his pocket. Then he told him to get out of the store and called him a nigger. Okay, that's what Cat Williams said. So he said, being a black man, he you know pretty much in, in you know in layman's terms, he wasn't just about to let nobody call him a nigger, and that's where the whole assault thing came from. And of course, he went outside, waited on the police, and he went to jail. This is what he said, okay? So, um, yeah, I just think Kevin, I mean, not Kevin Hart, I think that um, Cat Williams is a very, very, very funny man, and I wish that he would just stay the fuck out of trouble, girl. But, um, hey, it just seems like trouble follow him, follows him everywhere that he goes. Now, he did say in the response that one of the TMZ paparazzi people, they caught up to him or whatever, and they basically asked him what happened. He did say that Atlanta will not get any more of his funny, so I guess he won't be booking any more shows in the ATL shout it, okay girl so that's what's going on with Kevin Hart and um Cat Williams girl it's just hot shitty ass mess like I said I think Cat Williams is a very funny man I personally think that he's funnier than Kevin Hart but girl you just can't be going around fucking up saying people just, just talking shit about people just because they are they popping you just you can't do no shit like that I mean number one that's not gonna um help you be popping by you going around, you know, shitting on other people, trying to shit on other people, success, you can't, don't, don't do that, boo. Don't do that. That's not becoming. Just saying. Let's move on, okay? Next thing we're going to talk about, y'all, this Nina Simone biopic, bitch. Okay, when I seen this, now, another one that I was, girl, I was, I was sure enough mad about this one with the one with Maya Angelou, when I thought that, uh, I can't think of her damn name, but she was a white woman. Now, y'all know I ain't got nothing against my Caucasian family member, because I got plenty of them, okay? Matter of fact, I got a couple of them in my family who have married into my family. So I got nothing against Caucasian people. Y'all know that shit. I ain't got to sit there and explain that. But girl, I just, girl, I, I feel some type of way about having, you know, people of other um, uh, ethnicities play. But they're just like having a black person play a white person. For what? Why? Why would you do that when there are so many talented Caucasian people, white people, who can play the role of a white person? Why would you get a black person? To, I, I just don't understand that. It's stupid to me. But anyway, Nina Simone, okay, uh, uh, this chick, I, I didn't even know who this chick was, uh, the Zoe um, Saldana, I didn't even know who she was, but of course I know who Nina Simone was, but these people have decided that they want, um, uh, 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 hold on y'all, I'm sorry, um, this Saldana girl, whoever she is, to play Nina Simone. Now, the girl is a, a reportedly a Dominican girl, which is, you can clearly tell she's, number one, she's way lighter than um, uh, Nina Simone. They, she had to, they had to darken her skin, and they also had to put on, put on her a prosthetic nose. Family. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, so you mean to tell me? Nothing now, I'm not tr trying to give the lady too much at all. But there are so many. I don't understand why the hell these people need to um, uh, hire these people to play other people and they have to put them in blackface. Why? Why the hell do you have to do that? Even, like I said, even with lighter skinned people, why in the hell do you have to put all this, cake all this old light ass makeup on people to, to allow them to play these roles? No, you, why don't you cast talented people who look like these folks i don't i don't i'm not understand there are plenty of people out there who are talented who can play these roles now y'all might not agree with this but let me tell y'all think who i think could, could have played nina simone i think crazy eyes would have played nina simone very very well but that's just me but i i think crazy i don't know why crazy eyes just came into my head but i think crazy eyes could have played nina simone better. not that she uh, even auditioned for the shit but i'm just throwing a name out there just to say that there are a lot of talented actors and actresses who could play these people without you having to put folks in blackface of course her family and her her friends and her fans they are out fucking rage because i know i would be if i was a famous person and i died and and, and going on to jesus and i'm you know they, they, they're trying to find somebody to play me in a, in a biopic or, or what, uh, a movie or something like that. And they're going and getting somebody who is a, a straight up, um, either the super duper light person or a person who is of another 
ethnicity to play me and have to put them in blackface. Why? That, that shit just pisses me off. And I would be infuriated too if I was her family and her friends. Okay? I would be very infuriated too. Not anything against um, Zoe Saldana. Nothing against you, boo. But there are plenty of other talented actresses who can play Nina Simone without having to darken their skin and give them a prosthetic nose. I'm sorry. It's the same with Michael Jackson. Why in the hell what, did they try to... Why in the hell was they, did they hire that white man to play Michael Jackson? Why? Why? I'm just... Girl, let me let me move on. Like I said, I'm, I'm not even going to get my damn pressure up around here. So, bitch, what did you say? Okay, bitch, what did you say? Let's move on because we got one more. This, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about before I get the hell up off of here because I didn't held y'all for what? 30, 40, damn near, uh, uh, damn near an hour, girl. Anyway, let's talk about Big Frida, okay? Big Frida, if y'all don't know who the hell Big Frida is, Big Frida is the, what do they call that that type of music, that crump music, whatever it is down there in Louisiana. My mom, Louisiana. You mix the Negro with the Creole nigga, Texas Bama, like my baby that with baby head out, bro. Y'all see, I still got that formation back there. Yes, girl, yes. But anyway, Big Frida has been charged with theft of government funds, girl. In case y'all don't know what the hell that means, let me read y'all a little bit of what the fuck what the fuck is going on with Big Frida. And y'all, if y'all don't know, Big Frida was also in um, Beyonce's um, formation, you know, on her formation single or whatever. But it, Big, Big Frida has a television show, in case you guys don't know. Is the television show still on? I'm not sure. But yeah, Big Frida is a big name down in, in, in New Orleans, girl. But New Orleans bounce God, okay? Big Frida was charged with theft of government funds. According to reports, Frida named Freddie Ross Jr. lied about her income to obtain assistance for subsidized housing through Section 8 vouchers between 2010 and 2014. I quickly found myself in a new economic uh, structure and frankly knew little about how to manage, you know, basically handle my money. It wasn't until recently, after I stopped receiving housing vouchers, that it became very clear I had received assistance to which I wasn't entitled, Frida said in a statement to Pitchfork. It was an oversight, but one that I take full responsibility for. From the moment I, I was contacted by the government agents, I have fully cooperated and have already begun making arrangements to pay the full restitution of approximately $34,000, okay? I'm not going to read the rest of you guys can go and check it out for yourself. But basically, in, in essence, Big Frida, um, they found out that Big Frida was um, basically lying about her um, income to receive Section 8 vouchers. And um, basically what she is saying is that um, it was an oversight on her end. I guess she didn't, I don't know if she didn't realize what she was doing or I don't really understand the specifics of it. But I'm, I, I'm pretty sure she probably did know that she was, you know, girl. The, the fact that she is taking ownership of it is um, commendable. Of course, she's owning up to it. She's paying for it. But at the same time, as far as not knowing that, of course, she was making all this gang of money, girl. And you knew you couldn't just be keep getting these folks Section 8 vouchers, okay? I'm not trying to give Big Frida too much. But you knew, you, you know you can't be getting these folks Section 8 vouchers. And you and you making way more money than you was. Talking about you couldn't manage your money or some, some shit like that. Don't get me fucked up. Like I said, I, it's commendable that she's owning up to it, but you got people out here in, hell in, in everyday regular folks' life that's um, cheating the goddamn government and getting these Section 8 vouchers. So, um, good shout out to Big Frida for owning up to the situation and not just saying, I wouldn't get no Section 8 vouchers. She's just owning up to the shit and basically saying, I fucked up and I'm taking full responsibility for basically um, living in, you know, getting Section 8 vouchers when I wasn't entitled to getting them. So, um, big shout out to Big Frida for that. But like I said, you got people out here in everyday life. That's doing that shit. Right here getting Section 8 vouchers. Motherfucker riding around in Mercedes, uh, Mercedes and, 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 and BMWs and all this type of shit. And with 6 and 7 inch TVs in their damn living room. My motherfucking ass sitting here with a goddamn box TV. Okay, girl? And I got three motherfucking jobs around this piece. So, um, yeah. So, you got people like that that's been cheating, cheating the system from day one. But let fuck around and let one of these old shaggy head motherfuckers like Donald Trump get in office if you want to. Okay? Fuck around and let him get in office if you want to. Like all of y'all. Not y'all specifically. All these people that were out there for these new damn Jordans that they just came out with. Fine. As a matter of fact, it was this dude on my personal Facebook page who posted a video. He was in the mall. I guess randomly in the mall. I don't know if he was in to get some J's or what. It was a, a group of chicks that was in there fighting, okay, over some fucking Jordans, girl. Of course, they was, you know, didn't know each other. I don't know the specifics. I don't know if one of them had grabbed the fucking box and the other one wanted to buy. I don't know. 
but there was enough fun, okay? Over some goddamn shoes. Are you kidding me, family? And these same motherfuckers won no wet little poles on Super Tuesday. Okay, but yeah, these zombies bitches was in the mall. Uh, they would make sure they was in the mall getting them goddamn shoes. Girl, priorities, girl, priorities. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. If you are new here, okay, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to share it on all your social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, girl, everything. Okay, girl, share it on all your social media sites. Give it a thumbs up. And again, if you are new here, girl, be sure to be, be, be sure, girl, to go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we do a whole lot of crazy ass shit around up and through these parts. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace, family.